Today I want to talk to you about Mary, the Roman Catholic Queen of Hell. Oh boy. Offensive sermon number, whatever it is. <laughs> I lost count. Uh, the fact of the matter is, again, like I've been saying at the beginning of all these videos, um, these videos are meant to kick sin. They're meant to kick evil. I'm not trying to attack anybody personally. I'm not trying to um, incite hatred or things like that. This is these are not hate videos, right? Although I do hate sin, okay, but I don't hate people. And I realize there are going to be people that are just not going to watch the whole sermon. They're not going to consider the points that are raised. They're just going to want to post comments, nasty comments and things. And by the way, let me just say about comments, um, if I see that you're just really here to make problems and stuff like that, a lot of times, you know, I'll let you put your comments up. Um, most of them I don't delete uh, or remove or ban from channel um, unless I see profanity. You put profanity on my channel, you're done immediately. I just don't, I don't accept that. Uh, there's so much filthiness right now on the internet, it's just very vexing, and I don't want my viewers to be vexed by the comments. So, um, if you behave yourself, I'll let your comments up. But uh, this sermon is going to be in two parts. Okay, first of all, I'm actually going to show you from the Bible, we're going to look up every single reference to Mary, the Mary of the Bible. Then I'm going to show you from other sources and refer to some Bible passages as well, but I'm going to show you from other sources that the Mary of the Roman Catholic system is not the Mary of the Bible. All that they did over here is they took, they stole her name. But she is a totally, completely different person to the woman that appears in the Bible. And I'm going to show you some very hardcore proof today um, that this woman of Catholicism is the Queen of Hell. She's not the Queen of Heaven. They call her the Queen of Heaven. But she is the queen of hell, and she is damning more people to hell than any other system out there. Okay, so let's begin. Matthew chapter 1. We're going to go through all the references, and there's not, there's not a whole lot of scripture on Mary. Kind of interesting because Catholicism elevates her to the status of God, and uh, God the Father, really. I mean, she's his, she's his mother, you know. Holy Mary, the mother of God, you know. And uh, so, you know, you'd think that there'd be a lot more in the Bible about a woman like that. But there isn't. So let's begin here. Matthew chapter 1, verse 16. If you have a King James Bible, you need to turn in it. If you have another version, it's not going to work. So get a King James Bible. It's the only real one for the English-speaking people. It's the one that God chose, by the way, to use and to bless. Matthew chapter 1, verse 16, And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Okay, this is the very first time that the name Mary is mentioned, okay, in reference to this woman here. The very first reference there is Matthew chapter 1, verse 16. Now look at verse 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to made, make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Let me just stop there for a minute too, by the way. The, the proper King James Bible term there is, A virgin shall be with child. It's not the modern politically satanic word of pregnant. Okay, pregnant is not a King James Bible word. All right, pregnant totally removes the fact of what's really going on there with the body of a woman. She is with child. It's a child in the womb, not some kind of a embryo or some kind of a thing like that that you can just murder if you don't want to raise it. You know, if you don't want to take the responsibility for your actions of becoming with child, you just murder it and pretend it's not a child. It doesn't work. Abortion is murder. Verse 24. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. 
and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, what would be the point of saying firstborn son if she never had children after that? Okay, it really isn't much of a sense to that. And you are going to see from the King James Bible today that Mary had at least six other children besides Jesus. Not from God, but from her husband, Joseph. She, the Mary of the Bible was a good woman. She did not withhold her body from her husband. If she had done that, she would have been in sin, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. If she withheld her body and said, I'm going to be a perpetual virgin, she would have been in sin. She would not have been the sinless, you know, immaculate Mary that the Catholics try to claim is there. All right. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. And we're going to see so many inconsistencies between the Catholic Mary and the biblical Mary. And, you know, I'm assuming in this video that if you are watching this, that you have at least an understanding, somewhat of an understanding of what Catholicism believes about Mary. Okay, if you don't, if you don't really know what they teach about Mary, stay tuned because we're going to be covering it from their sources. And, and from some other interesting t places too, I might add. But Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. Let's read a couple of verses here. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Okay, let me just stop there for a minute. It's talking about the wise men that came to see Jesus there after he was born. And he was a young child, not a baby, by the way. So the nativity scene thing doesn't work. But the fact of the matter is, they fell down and worshipped um, who? Uh, Jesus. Why didn't they worship the Queen of Heaven? Um, probably because we're not supposed to worship her. Hmm. Verse 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Um, another question for you if you're a Roman Catholic. Why did the angel appear to Joseph and not to Mary? I mean, Mary's the immaculate, sinless, perpetual virgin. Shouldn't she have this knowledge there? Shouldn't she just be able to be like, hey, wait a second. I have a direct connection to God. I can tell that this is going to happen. And even without that, shouldn't the angel have gone to the mother of God first? And not just to her husband? Hmm. Interesting. But let's continue. Matthew chapter 12. We'll go to the next reference to Mary. Matthew chapter 12, verse 46. It says here, While he had talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. Well, when I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ and surrendered to full-time service as a preacher, um, I moved from doing my own will to doing the Father's will. So, according to the words of Jesus here, um, I am his mother and brother and sister. You say, what? You're not the Virgin Mary. Well, no, I'm not the Virgin Mary, but I'm part of the same body that she is. See, she's part of the bride of Christ and I'm part of the bride of Christ. You say, oh, what, what blasphemy? You thinking that you're on Mary's level? Well, you know, she probably had some things that she did and, and things that she was, you know, did as a, as a Christian that, you know, I might not have done yet or whatever. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, in terms of spiritual rewards and things like that, yeah, I'm going to have the same things as Mary when I get up there to heaven. Mary's going to go through the judgment seat of Christ. 
I'm going to go through the judgment seat of Christ. And if you're saved, you're going to go through the judgment seat of Christ. Well, when you see Mary, it's going to be, oh, hi, you know, she's just going to be another Christian, another saved Christian. You say, how do you know that? We just read it right there. Whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. Oh, and by the way, one of the Catholic teachings is they'll say that um, Jesus never said no to his mother. She always got her way. You know, she always came and commanded him and like a little puppy dog, he came over and submitted to the Holy Queen of Heaven. Um, no, uh, right there you just saw. She's outside saying, hey, I need to talk to him with uh, her sons. Jesus' brothers? Hmm. She's saying, I need to talk to you. And Jesus says, uh, well, I'll get to you when I can. Not very honoring to the uh, Holy Queen of Heaven there. The only other sinless being that ever existed, according to Catholicism, and another cult, which we'll be mentioning in the future here. But uh, let's continue. Matthew chapter 13, verse 13. 53. See, I don't, I don't think you're really proving the thing that she had other children. Well, we're going to see about that. Matthew chapter 13, verse 53. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed, departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? You know, and it's like that, by the way, too, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you go back to the, your hometown where you grew up and they knew what kind of rotten sinner you were and now you've changed and you're a new creature in Christ Jesus and they're going, who are you to be preaching this stuff and telling me I'm wrong and going to hell? I remember who you are, punk, you know. That's what's going on here. Now look at verse 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James? and Joseph, and Simon, and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Once then hath this man all these things. Now, to have sisters, that means at least two. It's in the plural. So Mary had at least six children, four boys, two girls, at least. There could have been more than two sisters. There could have been five sisters. We have no idea. But uh, did Mary have other children? Yeah. Jesus was her firstborn, but then there were at least six others that came after that. Praise the Lord for Mary. She didn't sterilize herself after having two children or something like this. No. You know, like a lot of modern people do. You know, Mary had lots of children. Hmm. Hmm. Verse uh, 57, And they were offended in him, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Very true, again, too, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ. You go back to your hometown area, and you can't do much for the Lord there because people will just remember what you were before you got saved. Very interesting. Next, we're going to go to Matthew 27. Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27, verse 55 through 56. Okay, it says here, and this is when Jesus is dying on the cross. It says here, um, And many women were there, beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. So there's a Mary there, who's the mother of James and Joseph. Um, who do we just read about there? That uh, Mary had four sons. Two of them there were named as James and Joseph. So Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there watching him being crucified on the cross with two of her sons. Hmm. Bet they don't show that in the uh, Catholic Passion plays. Of course not. Look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. 
In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. So Mary Magdalene, her she's named, but Mary, the holy, immaculate, virgin, queen of heaven, Mary, uh, mother of God, um, all the other titles, she's just called the other Mary. Wow, what a title of respect. The other Mary? Yeah, sure. See, when you read the Bible, you realize that she was just a Christian. That's all she was. And we're going to see about that later on. You know, she's a Christian. I'm a Christian. She's a saint. I'm a saint. That's all there is to it. Was she blessed and things to, to be able to bear the Son of God? Oh, sure, sure, absolutely. That's something that no other woman in history is going to be able to say that she had that honor of. Sure, that's, that's there. That's something that I can never do or some, you know, obviously I can't do it. But I'm saying, you know, a Christian woman can never have that honor. You know, sure, that's there, absolutely. But when it comes time for rewards, for witnessing to the lost and the, the kind of a life that she lived and whatever else, she's no different than any other Christian. And you say, but I, I just, I can't believe this blasphemy. All oh, this is just horrible. Turn in your Bible to Mark chapter 6 while we're turning there. You know, a lot of Catholics are all upset and everything else. You know why? Because Mary is a God. She is their God, I should say, or goddess. Excuse me, I should be more politically correct. She is their goddess, you know. And their goddess uh, predates Mary in the Bible. I'm going to show you that she's a very ancient goddess that was worshipped in the Old Testament under the name of the Queen of Heaven. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. Mark chapter 6, verse 1 through 6. It says here, And he went out from thence, and came into his own country, and his disciples followed follow him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and si and Simon? And are and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went round about the villages teaching. Now, I know the argument over there in Mark, or I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 13, it says, brethren, his brethren. And so people say, well, see, we're all called brethren. You know, believers, fellow believers are called brethren. But here in Mark chapter 6, in verse 3, it says, The brother of, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James? See, it is specifically spelling out that he is related to these four boys. They are his brothers. Hmm. That poses a real problem for the uh, perpetual virgin, Mary, of Catholicism. Real problem. She'd have to stay a virgin through all six or more of the children that she had. Doesn't work too good. Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15, verse 40 through 41. It says here, There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, the less, and of Joseph, and Salome. Hmm. That's very interesting there. Let me read verse 41. Who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. So there in verse 40, you see Mary, the mother of James, the less, and of Joseph and Salome. There you have one of the names of one of Jesus' sisters, Salome. So, again, you're seeing there that she had other children. Mary had other children. Okay, 
Look at chapter 16, verse 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. So again, you see she's mentioned. Now, Mark 16, verse 9 through 11. Now, when Jesus was risen early uh, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils, and she went and told them that uh, had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. You say, well, what's that have to do with Mary, the mother of Jesus? Uh, well, nothing, except for the fact that who did Jesus appear first to? Um, Holy Mary, Mother of God, blessed be the fruit of... Th no, 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 no. He appeared first to another Mary, Mary Magdalene. Hmm. Again, kind of a disrespectful thing to do to the Queen of Heaven. <laughs> because she wasn't the Queen of Heaven. Next, go to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Okay, it says here, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Huh? Wait a second. Whoa, whoa. Hold on a second here. Mary of Catholicism is preserved free from all stain of original sin. She and Jesus were the only two people that were ever born without sin, according to Catholic teaching, which I'll show you in a little bit. Well, then why would she be troubled when the angel comes in and says, Hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. What would trouble her about that? She'd be like, well, yeah, of course. I'm sinless. I'm immaculate. Why was she troubled? Because Mary was a sinner, and she knew she was a sinner, and it was humbling for her to be called that title there that angel just said to her. Mary was a very, very virtuous, very humble woman. That's why the Lord chose her. And I'm not trying to put this Mary down in this study, by the way. I'm not trying to make her look foolish or bad or anything. In reality, I'm trying to exalt her. Okay, what I'm, The one I'm going to put down is this false Mary of Roman Catholicism. That's the one I'm going to be attacking and exposing in this thing. But um, verse 29. Um, okay, no, we already read that one. Verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Uh, then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. That's the right attitude to have, by the way, if you're a woman. Be it unto me, even as thou wilt. You just let the Lord take over your life and tell you what to do and tell you how to dress and tell you what to eat and tell you what to say and tell you what to listen to and whatever. The Bible is your standard. Okay? Verse 39, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, 
Blessed art thou among women, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my child. Oh, wait. No, I didn't read that right. Um, God my um, servant. Um, uh, the novice God that, that uh, serves under me because I'm the queen of heaven. Uh, no. It says, uh, God my savior. Um, why do you need a Savior if you are immaculate? Did Jesus ever say, I am blessed by God my Savior? Did Jesus Christ need a Savior? No, He was the Savior. Why would Mary need a Savior? Catholicism teaches that she was immaculately conceived, she was a perpetual virgin, virgin and then she died without sin and was taken up into heaven, the Assumption of Mary. You don't need a savior if you can do all that magical stuff. Problem, isn't it? But look at verse 48. Jump down to verse 48 here. For, actually it's not really much of a jump. It's just the next verse. Um, for he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. Why not? Why didn't she say holy is my name? She's the queen of heaven, isn't she? Because she was a Christian. She was a, a saved woman. Christian after the crucifixion. Say it that way. Verse 50. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. Okay. So, again, you know, where's this stuff at that she is this highly exalted queen of heaven, this supernatural being that's here that's sinless? You just don't see that thing. Okay? And she goes on to say a couple more things there. Uh, pretty much ends there in verse 56. About, it says, and Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. So, you know... Again, this is very not very consistent with the teachings of Roman Catholicism. But now let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. And it came to pass in those days there went, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Now let me just pause there for a minute, okay? Because this is one that will be brought up as a contradiction in the Bible. They'll say... See, it says that all the world was taxed and, and therefore that's not possible because all the world was not known about at that point in time. So the Bible sure is a dumb book. Uh, no, it's there was a decree that went out that all the world should be taxed. Okay, so Caesar there would have written all the world should be taxed. You know, that was his decree that he sent out. So they took it out to the known world that they had control of, over. Okay? His decree was what said the whole world should be taxed. Not that the whole world was taxed. So again, these, these stupid little contradictions that these atheist fools will come up with, they just don't hold any water to them. But uh, let's continue here. Verse 2. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Of course, the very famous story there, of the birth of Jesus Christ. I go down to verse 15 there in Luke chapter 2. It says here, And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they 
came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at, by, at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Look at verse 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Um, why would Mary ponder these things? Why would you know, she kept all these things and ponder them in her heart? I mean, don't you think she would have had all knowledge being there, the holy, immaculate, blessed virgin and all this stuff? It's like she's going, I don't really know what this stuff means. Why? Because God didn't reveal everything to her. Why? She was a regular woman. Very blessed woman, to be sure. Very sure. But she didn't have this holy, supernatural, you know, deity thing with her. Like the Catholics teach. It's just not there. All right, now look at verse 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of, two, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Interesting wording there too, the Lord's Christ, because Satan has his own Christ, which is going to be coming in the not-too-distant future, the Antichrist. So you have the Lord's Christ and you have Satan's Christ. But uh, he was looking, this guy here was looking for the Lord's Christ. Verse 27, And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. If you have one of these satanic new versions that comes from the Vatican, they will say the child's father and mother. Okay? Covering up for the fact that it was actually, Joseph was not the father of Jesus. God, the father, is the father of Jesus. And you say, well, that's what Catholicism teaches. Blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, sure, it's what they teach in their official doctrine, but their perverted, corrupted Egyptian Bible, you know, Bibles, uh, mess that up. See, you say, well, that doesn't make sense. Why would they teach one thing in their in their official statements and and another thing in their in their wicked new versions? You know why? Because they don't want people to have faith in any Bible, including their own. They want to have people rely on the traditions, on the teachings of the official church, like here in the Catechism. So they make scripture contradict and have all kinds of problems and you say well which one is which bible is the word of god well any of them you just pick what you like out of it and, and then rely on your church traditions to interpret the sacred scriptures because if you interpret the sacred scriptures to yourself it'll lead to heresy and error and all kinds of stuff which actually ironically is true because if you're using an niv or a jerusalem bible or a new american bible or the dewey reams or whatever if you're using any of these corrupted Alexandrian perversions, and you are reading it for yourself, it will lead to corruption. It will lead to error because they're false Bibles. But if you're reading the King James Bible and the Holy Ghost is within you and you are saved, it will lead you into truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. But let's continue on. Verse 34 here. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one 
Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phenuel of the tribe of Aser, she was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity, and she was a widow, widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayer, prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And Mary too, right? Uh, it doesn't mention her. Uh, you're going to see that there's not a whole lot mentioned about the immaculate, sinless virgin Mary. Okay? That, you know, she was this holy Mary, mother of God, you know, mother of, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, queen of heaven and all this stuff. You're not going to see that in the Bible. But you'll see it in the traditions. You know, good stuff there. Jump down to verse 48 here in Luke chapter 2. Okay. And, you know, here, of course, to kind of skip ahead with the story, you can read all this in your, you know, own time there. But um, Jesus is basically stays behind in Jerusalem and, and he's, you know, talking with the doctors of the law and stuff, asking them questions and things. But um, verse 48 says here, and they have to turn around and come back to Jerusalem. It says here, And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Now look at this. Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Verse 49, And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Now, if you have a King James Bible, though, you'll notice, you'll, if you have a King James Bible there, sorry, you will notice that the word father is capital F. Where Jesus speaks. With Mary, it's a lowercase f. You see, Mary was talking about Joseph. She was acting like Joseph was the father. Why? Because she was trying to cover up the fact that Joseph was not the father of Jesus. She was trying to co cover up for what many perceived to be an illegitimate birth. Many Jews today consider Jesus Christ to have been an illegitimate birth. And Mary's trying to cover up for it. Now, when you try to cover up truth, um, typically that is called a lie. And why didn't Jesus say, oh yeah, you know, I understand what you're saying there, mother. You know, father and my, my father and mother are here. I'm sorry, I have to leave. He didn't say that. He corrected her. He said, wish you not that I must be about my father's business. He wasn't talking about Joseph. He was talking about God the Father. So here as a young boy, Mary sins and Jesus corrects her. Hmm. How do you work that out if you believe in a perpetual, sinless, immaculate, holy Mary, mother of God, blessed virgin? How do you, how do you reconcile that? It's a problem. You know, run off to get one of your new Alexandrian perversions. They... Speak differently. But look here at verse 50. And they understood not the, th the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So again, she's keeping this thing in her heart. And she's just like, I don't, man, I don't really you know, know what's going on here. And boy, this is really something... I bet it would be weird, too. I mean, I, I say this in, in Mary's defense here. I bet it would be weird having a son that's God the Father. You know, God manifest in the flesh. That would be kind of odd. You know, why? Well, because you have a regular woman and she has a regular child. The child's going to mess up and, and sin and do all kinds of stuff and she's going to have to correct him. Um, what would it be like to raise a sinless child? <laughs> Ooh, you know, the judge of all the earth. That's my son there. Be careful, he'll judge you. You know, I mean, you know, that would be an odd thing. But let's continue here. Go next to 
Luke 24. Luke 24, verse 10. Okay, it says here, It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. So there you see Mary again, the mother of James, one of Jesus' brothers. James was one of the brothers of Jesus. So she is mentioned again. John chapter 2. John 2, verse 1 through 5. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. He called the queen of heaven woman? Well, that's not very good, is it? Um, you see, while Jesus was the son of Mary here on the earth, you still have to remember that he was God manifest in the flesh. And for him to go along with sin, for him to go along with error, would have caused him to not be that perfect sacrifice that he was to be the sinless son of God. So there were times when she said things that was not right, and he just looked at her and said, Woman, <laughs> what have I to do with thee? Don't talk that way to me. See? Mary messed up again. Why? Because Mary was a sinner, just like every other Christian is a sinner. Saved sinner. That's what Mary was. Next, we're going to go to John chapter 6, verse 41 through 44. Just a few more references to look up here. John chapter 6, verse 41. It says here, The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So, again, they see Mary as his mother, but they don't see her as anything more than that. They don't, they don't say, well, you know, yeah, he's the son of Mary, you know, Holy Mary, Mother of God, you know, and stuff, and they start crossing themselves. No, they don't do anything like that. They don't say, "Oh yeah, Mary. Oh, she's immaculate. She's she does. She never sins. That woman. You know, she's really something." No, no. Just oh yeah, the mother of Jesus. There, yeah. Mm -hmm. John chapter nineteen. John nineteen verse twenty five through twenty seven. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. So Jesus here entrusts John, the disciple whom he loved, he entrusts John with the care of Mary. So I believe at that point in time that Mary probably was a widow. And I don't know whatever happened to the other brothers and sisters, but they must have been someplace else and maybe Jesus didn't trust them, you know. I mean, maybe Jesus' family, they weren't all, you know, saved. Imagine that. But, um, you know, the fact is, he looks at John, who he can trust, and he says, hey, John, take care of her. Okay. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Okay. 
It's talking about all these early Christians there after Jesus ascends back up to heaven. <sighs> Excuse me. Verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. She's just in with all the other Christians? Why isn't she given a special place of reverence? Uh, probably because she's just a, another Christian. And not a uh, deity, a God living among us or something like this. And I believe that that's the last reference to Mary, but I'll show you there is one other Mary mentioned here. Revela or, excuse me, yeah, Revelation. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, verse 6. I'll show you this other reference. It says, uh, Greet Mary who bestowed much labor on us. Now, is that Mary, the mother of Jesus? I don't know. There's at least two other Marys mentioned there, and there's other Marys, of course, throughout the New Testament there. Uh, the, the sister of Lazarus and things too. So, um, there is a Mary here in Romans 16, verse 6. Kind of doubtful that it's Mary, the mother of Jesus, but even if it is, again, you know, greet Mary. Hey, Mary, how you doing? Doesn't say worship Mary. Doesn't say build altars and shrines to her and build big statues with her and stuff like that and, and uh, you know, pray rosaries to her and all this other stuff. It's not there. All right. It's just not there. So we're going to end this part of the study and we're going to go into part two of the study uh, where we're actually going to show you what the quote unquote Mary of Catholicism, what that's all really about, who she really is. And uh, Catholicism is ancient Babylonian paganism. It's Satanism, witchcraft. And because uh, when I say Satanism, it's witchcraft, people in witchcraft say we're not Satanists, you know. Um, we just worship Mother Earth and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, entry-level witches are ignorant of what goes on in the higher levels of witchcraft. And when you get into the highest levels of witchcraft, you go to black magic Satanism. So, and, you know, anything that is not worshiping Jesus Christ is worshiping Satan. Satan will take on many forms, many different systems out there. Um, anything that is not true worship of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the pages of the King James Bible, Anything else is Satanism. So, but we will continue here in the next part, and I'm going to show you who the Mary of Catholicism really is.